And so they had the bones and everything for a coffee shop with no one to run it. it Cost about 135K. You have that like a little fire for something like, look into it, pursue it, and go after it. I'm gonna guess probably 10 grand. My name is Emmett Brancamo and I own Eden Cafe. So how we got started is kind of, I don't think, I like it's, I think it's a little less than a miracle, right? And so I was working at Bethany Christian Services and a couple guys got together of us working. We're like, man, what kind of businesses would we like to erect? And I was like, man, I'd always dreamed about opening up a coffee shop and just kind of talking about my passion with that and how my mom and grandma kind of inspired me to have it, like to like coffee, you know, like a jazz. I'm like, I think it'd be awesome to own that. And someone there is like, hey, I have started a coffee shop overseas to support my ministry overseas. He's like, it's really not that hard. I'd love to sit down and coach you through this process. I was like, it really can't be that easy. He goes, it really is. All you gotta do is make a business plan and get some funding and find a building and just grind and put it together. And I was like, well, all right. So I, I thought I'd just give it a shot. So I spent about, I'd say four months working on crafting a business plan, trial and error, talking to my friends, sending it to my people, like, hey, how does this look? Like, oh, we should adjust this. And so going through that process, it was, it was very humbling because I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty smart. I like to think I'm pretty good at math and charts and like a jazz. And so finding out like ways that can improve that was awesome. And so going through that process, I found a building and I'm like, all right, this is it, God, let's do it. Let's, you got me into this position, let's do it. The building was um, pretty pretty pricey for the rent and everything coming together cost about 135 and just like expenses and going through that process asking the banks and they're like no we're not gonna give uh, a 23 year old 125k to start a coffee shop I'm like why not they're like come on going through that I kind of shelved the idea and kind of prayed about it I'm like all right you know God I feel like you put this on my heart but if you don't want me to do this I don't understand but if you do send me a sign and like, not a couple days later I got an email from Bridge Street Market saying hey I see you want to put a, a coffee shop next door like can we see your, your business plan we want to see that I'm like, all right, you know, I'll give it a shot. They're pretty notable. And so I, I, I sent it over to them and they knew of a, of a building that was wanting to put a coffee shop and that's this building right here. And so before Eden Cafe was here, the Pavilion Cafe was here. They were kind of going through a season of transition their main person who was running it was like, hey, I'm looking at opportunities somewhere else. And she got her dream job eventually at Mel Trotter. And so they had the bones and everything for a coffee shop with no one to run it. And so Bridge Street Market forwarded the business plan of Eden Cafe to here at Bridge Street Ministries. And they, they kind of reached out and said, hey, this is like an answer to our prayers. We have everything for a coffee shop, just no one to run it. I'm like, oh, wow, that's an answer to my prayer too, because I have an idea for a coffee shop, just nothing to run. And then so I said, we gotta get together. The visions of Eden Cafe and the ministry, like the visions and what we wanna see done here and maybe making sure it kind of co-aligns with British Ministries um, visions and missions of how they wanna do. And so kind of talking about our, our vision, how we wanna see Eden Cafe succeed, they're like, this is perfect. We, we need you in this space. Like, I would love to be in this space. And so this is kind of how we got started. Our day-to-day -day operations are fairly fairly simple for the most part, honestly. I get up, I get over here, I make some coffee in the mornings. First, I go to Van's Pastry Shop, pick up some donuts, make sure we got those. Uh, come in, make some coffee, and then clean up everything to make sure it looks tidy for the day. And then that's kind of how we start our days. And our days kind of vary to day-to-day, -day, especially I do have a business partner. He kind of does the, the behind-the-scenes work. And so I kind of do the main, not the main, but like the, the face value stuff, right? And so kind of depending on what is needed, so like right now we're working on just like running numbers to see how we can grow and expand the, the opportunities of this place where yesterday it was like, oh, let's see what events we can coordinate in this space. So it very, varies on, on day to day, but essentially it's just like, hey, how can we make Eden better? You have new customers coming in. How do you think they found out about you? Is it a lot of walker traffic to advertising? Yeah, I would like to say it definitely varies on the seasons. Lately, because it's been a little chilly outside, people have been noticing us on Instagram. That's kind of where we mainly put our focus on, because that's kind of the demographic we'd like to reach are mostly Instagram users, but mostly Instagram users, social media users. Sometimes you see some people like walking, especially with this taco shop next door. One of the best taco shops in Grand Rapids. And so everyone's like, oh, we got to go there. And so they're like, oh, look, there's a cafe next door. And then we'll, I say like, hey, how would you, how'd you find us? We're like, honestly, we're just getting tired tacos next door and we're like man there's a coffee shop let's go check it out a lot of people see us on instagram i think we're kind of known for having a very creative menu and so people like to look and follow our instagram and be like what is, what's going on over there what are they cooking up at eden cafe uh, so to answer your question i would say a mixture of both but definitely instagram and uh, facebook for sure so our menu is fun i would have to say nothing short than fun so we have a variety of just first we sell like the basic basic 
basics of a cafe. You have your lattes, your cappuccinos, your black, your drip coffee, your pour over coffee. Then we kind of have like the extensive cafe menu, like like a cafe macchiato is like a, like a really small drink. And then we have an affogato, which is like ice cream over espresso. But yeah, so I'd like to go in deeper into our menu. Something that I want to make Eden known for is having to create a menu. Like anyone can make lattes, like yeah, cool. Like that, those tasty, great, love those. But like we have a thing called a, a cereal latte, right? And so like we take cereal and like pretty much steep it while we're prepping your latte. And that's the milk that we use for your cereal. Or like we have like a red velvet cupcake latte where we put like cream cheese inside the milk and steam it so you get the flavors of the cream cheese you get the chocolate you get all of those flavors in there so it's actually mixed in we also offer a thing called a s'more latte which is just really fun because we aim we roast a marshmallow in front of you you can see it like it's like you're in a at a campfire but you're at a cafe so it's like it's just a, a wonderful mix of everything we also have food we have pastries sandwiches and bagels that we offer here we also have fruit drinks for not coffee lovers. We have these things called revivers, which are essentially like Starbucks refreshers and like pink drinks, really good. And we also have smoothies as well. You guys offer any type of like yeah, so we we are really pushing that with Wix and DoorDash. Wix is kind of how we do our website, but we noticed like drive-through is a really convenient thing for people also pick up it, and so we really want to push that. So making it so we have deals on those delivery services and to order online, so people are enticed to like, man, I'm on my way to work, and this is kind of a busy road, right? And so it's like, on my way to work, I can just order online, swing through, grab my drink in, and leave. But yeah, we do offer those. Yep. Do you have any no, it's really just me right now. Just you, yep. Uh, we are looking at uh, expanding that, and so that's been a fun adventure to do. When you first started to now, how many hours did you put in? So I put in about, I'd say, 48 total, like, man, like working in the cafe hours, because that's about how much we're open. And then I would say three hours after, in a sense, or three hours kind of every day in between either morning or afternoon, either going shopping, running numbers, looking at the website, making sure everything's updated, crafting recipes. So I don't really know an exact answer for that, not gonna lie to you, probably above 50, above somewhere around there a week. What are some of the biggest positives and some big positives is like for me, I like being able to impact a person, right? So those, I mean, when I make a latte, I don't have much time to talk to an individual, but being able to converse with them and be able to have like a, almost like a, a split second of connection to be able to talk to them and understand where they're coming from and what what they're, what they got going on in their, their lives. And then for them to come back and to be able to memorize that and to be able to go in through and have a conversation with them, to be able to kind of have the interaction with my customers has been very impactful for me to be able to have a split second to have a connection with them and be able to, if especially if they come back in and be able to memorize like, hey, so this was going on last week. Like, did you guys, did you guys ever figure that out? Like, how was, how did that go for you? And to be able to have that long lasting conversation that like kind of like you get to know someone, you get to know people, get to impact them, I get to actually like be a part of the day and make their day is my best thing for being a business owner, uh, especially at this coffee shop. And kind of the, the downside is just like, you don't consider it a downside, but definitely tough is just like the grind. Like it's just like the day to day, like in the morning, I'm waking up at like six o'clock and I'm like, oof, ooh wee, I don't, I don't want to do it today. But I'm reminded just like, hey, let's, we, we signed up for this, like let's get up and let's get at it. And so just the grind mentality has definitely been, been new for me. Do you guys service a lot of groups or do you guys have any type of events that bring in more customers? Yeah, we'd like to service groups, like, like you said, with the Run Club. Something that we're gonna try to unfold is a lot of like, we want to make it so students understand like, hey, come on in. This is a good place for you to come on in and study, get your homework done. It's a quiet, chill coffee shop, very, very low key. So you can come on and get a drink and finish that report or study for that quiz you have the next day. We do run events here, mostly in the summertime because you know, that's how kind of traffic works. We have open mic nights. And so we kind of, once a month, we're going to probably do it twice a month coming up. Getting some people in this space and be able to showcase what they have, whether it's a, a singing talent, a written poem that they have going on to be able to open up the cafe for evening hours get people some exposure get out their talents and stuff like that
definitely going through that right now and understanding what kind of growth I want to see with Eating Cafe because it kind of at a crossroads right now with like what we want to see out of this place. But do we just want to surpass that? And oh, let's move on to the next one. How can we get the next one up? And my vision is to see this place expand here and go to its full potential, like expanding hours as much as possible. Being able to pour into the community that pours into us is kind of what I started here. And I want to make sure I see that through and make sure that, that that's done here properly. Do you have three tips of advice for other entrepreneurs or I would have to say just find what you love to do and really stick with it like so that was placed in your heart for a reason and I don't think it's any shy shot of it to a coincidence so you, you have that like a little fire for something like look into it pursue it and go after it and don't be afraid to grind for it because it's gonna it's not that easy I know it's probably a very cliche thing but it, it's not it takes a lot of hustle and don't be afraid to put yourself out there there's so many people that I've met so many relationships that I've formed by even just starting eating cafe just by making a business plan I farm so many friendships that I, I want to continue on forming and having for the rest of my life and so it just makes a big impact on what you see what is this machine right here this is I mean I don't know exactly what the machine is called but it's a grinder it has a, a double hopper essentially so this is espresso this is decaf espresso and so whatever you ask normally mostly it's common just like tap it espresso and you press the button down here and the espresso comes out is it like a essential to have? Yes, it's very essential. So like this grinds the beans into a size that we need to actually pull the espresso shot. If you grind it too big, like the, the or too small, depending on the brand of espresso that you have, it could affect the taste and also the taste, so it doesn't taste as good. Can I ask how much something like that might cost? So I'd say, I don't, I don't really have no clue. Like it's three grand, maybe okay. more. And then what is this next machine here? Uh, this is the Rancello. Uh, espresso machine and so this is a given not given but this is a from Ferris coffee and it's um these two work so then you grab the grounds from here and you put it up in here and then we program these buttons to pull the water for a certain amount of time to pull the correct amount of espresso for our shots and you can kind of program these buttons to do different things this uh, for our first couple little thing you can see here is uh, for our 1924 espresso. And then for the second button is decaf. I'm used for a pause button. Kind of pulls just for as long as you need. And what does something like that run? I'm gonna guess probably 10 grand. <laughs> Fairly expensive, yeah, yeah. so we treat this baby right. Definitely. <laughs> and we can make iced latte. So normally you like pull the shot, put the espresso in there, put some flavoring in there. We add some ice. And it's, kind of, it's kind of fun for it. It's empty, I know, but like, you feel like you're at a bar, you know, you're like, talking to people, you know, like James Bond style, you're shaking, not scary kind of thing, but yeah. Blender for like smoothies and stuff like that. We make shamrock shakes, um, fruit smoothies out of it. It's a fun time. This is how we make our batch brew coffee. So in the morning I come in, I grab the scale, turn it on, I grab a cup, I tear it out, and then I want to get 140 grams of coffee for the recipe that we use. And so we take the West Side blend, we dump it in here, get to about 140. And if you get too much, you just got like a little scoop and put it in until you get to 140 essentially. Perfect. And then once you get to that point, put it in there and then press the button. And then grab a coffee filter, put it in here, put the rounds in here, put it back up in here, press and brew, and it'll brew out a batch of coffee. On average, how many customers do you think you're seeing in like a month or so? I'm gonna guess 400. I could be very wrong. I'm just gonna throw that out there. I'm gonna guess, I don't know. Um, so I got Square to do it for me, and I just look it up. <laughs> Are they buying one cup of coffee or two yeah. cups? What are, are they buying extra a, stuff? A lot of that? people get like a, a latte and a bagel combo or like a latte and a pastry, especially with our DoorDash. A lot of people get multiple things at this one. That's what we've been noticing that the DoorDash people order in pairs or, or multiple things and then they come in and say, oh, can I just get one thing? And then they go sit down or vice versa. What do you think some of like your biggest expenses are? Coffee, that's our yeah. biggest. <laughs> the beans itself are our biggest expense that we've noticed it's about $600 a month just to get coffee oh. in here, yeah. So milk is pretty 
big. Honestly, the price of fruit is pretty. It's surprisingly, it's pretty high. So for especially for our smoothies and our, like our, our fruit drinks that we make, we like accidentally fruits like frozen fruits. So it's like ice, but fruit. So I mean, that's also pretty expensive as well. But nothing, nothing too crazy. So our survivor is super fun to make. I'll make one that kind of resembles a bean drink. And so our survivor, we take fruit purees and make a drink out of it essentially. So we take some strawberry puree and dump it in this thing. We also want to use passion fruit puree because that gives us another really good flavor in there as well. And so that's in here, get a little hot water, we stir it up. We have our uh, mixture here, some kind of mm -hmm. and then yeah, white grape juice, which is sponsored by Welch's. Coconut milk. Then we got some ice. Grab this one as well. Tight, and then just mix it up. And then, and then, another one. Take a off. Recently, we got some fruit. This our freezer is. So we got some fruit, some strawberry chunks, and put it in there. So actually get some flavor, and then put a lid on it. And there you go. So, how did you learn to make the drinks and stuff like that? There is a coffee shop over there on Stewart has coffee classes as they teach you how to properly make lattes, how to pull espresso shots, like how to do it good and how to know it tasting right. They also kind of teach you how to froth milk and how to do simple latte art. But a lot of even cafe's recipes are like from my head or essentially like just random things that you're like, oh yeah, we should make a drink. Let's like, let's find how to make like a Starbucks refresher. And so as so you Google it, obviously, and then you just kind of copy the process. But a lot of the lattes and stuff, is through the, the Ferris training and then practice. So in the name Eden, it just kind of means pleasure and delight, right? And so I want people to come in this space and feel that pleasure with the coffee that or business or service that they have and that delightful feeling when they sit down to catch up with that friend or finish that homework or study for that test, that they, they feel all those things while they're in here. To be able to do what they came to do and do it successfully is like, Awesome, and be able to just maybe take away, take, maybe take a load off of life for a minute, just come in, just kind of be at rest for a minute. That's kind of what I want Eden to be for people.